Oh boy, we got a good one. Oh, I'm dark. I was gonna say, we got a good one for you guys today. We're doing a part two to the American soldier USA versus the British soldier army military comparison for 2021. In the last video I did, the 2020 version, the comment section was a rampage. It, I was scared to even read some of the comments, but I, you guys know me. I voice my opinion straightforward. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you can call me an idiot in the comments. Either way, I don't care because I'm having fun. So that being said, here we go into the American soldier versus the British soldier. Again, if you're sensitive, this may not be the video for you because I speak very freely and I speak my opinions. It's a reaction, that's the point. So that's your warning, that's your disclosure. Anything from here, if you're whining in my comments, I'm gonna say, Fuck yeah. <laughs> Subscribe if you're new here, like the video, check out my other American versus British military video if you haven't seen it, and here we go. Whew. Oh, DM me any video requests that you have over on Instagram. It's 2025, and after a strange shift in geopolitics Ooh. and world powers, the USA and the UK have found themselves going to war with each other. These- Okay, first of all, I don't think that will ever happen, and I pray it never happens. But that being said, we have done a military comparison in the past where we said who would win in a battle and we whooped y'all's ass. Now, I did see a video from the infra infographics show of the US versus the world, who would win. We can react to that. Let me just say though, I believe America will win that even too. We spend billions on our military. We have endless amounts of manpower. So it's kind of just like, there's no competition in any way, shape or form. But let's still see how this video goes. Long time allies that won. Ooh. What just happened? I Mr. Beast! Beast! ...fought side by side in World War II in Afghanistan have become arch enemies fighting for global dominance. I don't think this will ever happen though. The rest of the world though. looks on in horror. But who will win? There's one fact that's hard to ignore. One side is larger than the other by a long way. The United States. Based on size alone, the U.S. military is the clear winner. It yeah. boasts over 1.4 million personnel, compared with a measly 149,000 in the U.K. That might not guarantee success if the whole U.S. Army consists of untrained airheads and idiots, <laughs> but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I was going to say that. And on top of that, you guys have so many allies. At this point, America has been burning bridges around the world. Y'all have been building them. So... I don't necessarily know if you can even compare the whole uh, manpower thing anymore because again, y'all have so many endless allies. Now, that being said, in fact, what did he just say? I forgot. The whole US Army consists of untrained airheads and idiots, but it doesn't hurt. Yes, we practice quantity over quality, which you guys have pointed out before. You said that your military men are very, just better in all aspects. At first I took offense to that because you were disrespecting our soldiers, but I can see how you might be right. You might be right. Y'all did have the most prominent Navy force, you know, the Redcoats in history. So we maybe could learn a few things from you about our soldiers. Especially when you consider the amount the U.S. spent. One more thing. There's a difference when you're actually fighting because you believe in what you're fighting for versus just being forced to do it through propaganda and this idea that your nation is the best. You know, a fake sense of, I need to fight for this country because I'm an American versus whatever reason y'all fight. I feel like the moral and motives of it also have a big impact on the style of your soldiers, if that makes sense. I hope that made sense. The American military budget is a huge $740 billion compared to the UK's much smaller $49 billion. How cute. Money can't buy you everything in life. Okay, but let's not act like 49 billion is still not a huge amount of money to fund anything. 49 billion, 740 billion. How do we, how do we even have that much money? And people are, are homeless, people are starving. People are living paycheck to paycheck and we have $740 billion to throw around. And we're not even fighting anybody, really. Uh, before we go out and start fighting wars with everyone, we need to fix what's going on in our homes. And, and by home, I mean our countries. But it helps to win wars. But to be fair, both countries take their military spending seriously. In terms of GDP, the USA spends 3.4% on the military, and the UK spends around 1.7%. That figure won't help the Brits win a war, but it's something they can nurse their national ego with. Okay. 
when you put it like that though, 3.4% of your entire budget isn't that monumental. Why is it so dark? And the fact that we have 3% equates to $700 billion, I think we're fine. So far, things aren't looking good for the Brits. They've been outnumbered and outspent. Let's see if they can turn things around with their equipment. As they say, it's not all about the size, it's I about still think y'all have us beat by water attack. has the best weapons, gadgets, and vehicles. If we're talking about quantities, the USA gets an easy win here, as you'd expect. They spend far more on the military overall, so of mm -hmm. course, they have more stuff. The UK only has 227 tanks compared to the USA's 8,370. As for armored vehicles, the UK has 4,673 and the USA has 41,760. Is the UK's lack of resources such a big deal? Experience shows us that yes, yes it is. During the Afghanistan conflict in 2007, the British Army stationed in the south of the country have been finding it increasingly difficult to maintain peace over the last three years because of their lack of equipment. Okay, but let's not act like throughout history, the lesser man hasn't won a battle. Again, I think this just ties into, yeah, you can have all the men you want, you can have all the military power, the, the vehicles, the tanks, all that, but if you don't know what you're doing, if you can't uh, maneuver or plan, if you're just dumb about the way you attack, it's easy for the counterpart to uh, capitalize off of that. So yeah, we can have all the money, all the tanks, you know, we could have everything more than you guys, but if you know how to go about it and play off of our faults, you could still win. Guess who had to sweep in to save them? The America! Americans. The U.S. Brigadier General Lawrence Nicholson brought in 4,000 Marines with a new approach. Go big, go strong, go fast. The new yeah. forces weren't exactly successful in maintaining peace, as it... So our main way of attack is fast hard give them all you got it's literally just because it's like how can you stop like that much force coming at you you're just plainly outnumbered familiar with the kandahar massacre and the maywan district murders will know oh. but they were good at going big and going strong which could give the oh no and <gasps> I, again i don't think having the hugest military in the world is necessarily something to be proud of because at the end of the day what are you using that Force 4, Destruction and Death. Battle. In Afghanistan, the British used a jackal vehicles, which are designed for maneuverability rather than protecting the person inside. The Americans had MRAPs, or mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles. Although oh. MRAP tanks are classified as light-armored vehicles, they weigh a massive 14 to 18 tons and are a lot sturdier than the jackals, designed to withstand the improvised explosive devices that threatened yeah. troops during the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts. They were much more effective at keeping the troops safe from danger mm -hmm. than anything the Brits had. However, the U.S. Marines seem to have plenty of admiration for the Brits and what they achieved, despite their lack of equipment. So, that's mm -hmm. something. One American Marine commented, The biggest thing I noticed was the vehicles they drive. You guys are friggin' gutsy. I wouldn't get shot at in one of those. Well, that's like a underhanded com compliment. But also, I was just gonna say, whether you're a British soldier or an American soldier, a veteran on either side, like, you deserve so much respect and, like, praise, because would I go out and do what you did? Absolutely not. Does having more flimsy vehicles make the British the weaker side, or just more badass? It depends on which way you look at it. When your life's on the line, there's no need to be badass. Do what's safe. Another difference between the British and U.S. armies is their deployment of women on the front line. We don't want to say women are better or worse in the military oh, than men, because that'd probably start a war in the comments section, so we'll let you decide, but it's definitely worth mentioning. In Afghanistan, the U.S. Marines were shocked to see women wandering around shower blocks wrapped in nothing but a towel. I don't know if this is maybe a bias that I have personally or like influenced from history and culture, but whenever I think of women in war, I think of them nursing the soldiers, not being the soldiers who need nursing. So that's, what did he say has the most women? I assume it's the American side, but. Women on the front line. We don't want to say women are better or worse in the military than men, because that'd probably start a war in the comments section. So we'll let you decide, but it's definitely worth mentioning. In Okay, sorry, to pause again. I didn't even notice that, but look at the different islands he has to represent each place. You have New York City, staple pieces. In fact, that's all you have for the United States. And then over here, you have stuff that's represented by London. So it's, again, whenever I first began these culture videos, y'all saw how ignorant I was. I thought the United Kingdom was London. <laughs> you have the Big Ben, the uh, red buses, you have the red telephone booths. 
I think it's called London Bridge. It's just funny to see. Oh, and then you have the little rock statue that I believe is in Ireland? Or Switzerland. Not Switzerland. Scotland. One of the two, I don't know. Probably start a war in the comments section, so we'll let you decide. But it's definitely worth mentioning. In Afghanistan, the U.S. Marines were shocked to see women wandering around shower blocks wrapped in nothing oh. but a towel, with no cares in the world. The U.S. does have women in the armed yeah. forces, but they aren't always allowed to be on the front line or live in close proximity to their male counterparts. See, yeah, that's a misconception then. Because whenever, like, obviously we have women in the military, but I didn't know they aren't allowed to do the same things that men are. You know, I see them in the, the uh, camo outfits and stuff, so I was assuming they are doing the exact same job, but like he just said, it's like segregated by sex and they aren't on the front lines. Which I don't know if I'm, I w I'm not offended by that because again, would I want to be on the front lines? No. But are they saying they can't be on the front lines just because they're women? Eh. Y'all let me know your thoughts on that. Should women be allowed on the front lines, but at the same time, do you want to be shot at? In the UK, on the other hand, women are seen as equals. Revolutionary concept. Despite their surprise at the close working and living relationships between women and men in the British Army, the US Marines soon realized these women were professional soldiers they needed to take seriously. But could the initial shock be a trump card up the sleeves of the British? Anyway, time to get on to important stuff. The real factors that determine the success of the military side. Who can handle the most alcohol? It's a contentious time. <laughs> why is this? Why is this a conversation we're about to have right now? Alcohol in the military. I know it's relevant for y'all, but we all know y'all have us beat whenever it comes to drinking. Card up the sleeves of the British. Anyway, time to get on to the important stuff. The real factors that determine the success of the military side. Who can <laughs> handle the most alcohol? Uh, it's a contentious topic. The British are known for drinking more heavily, and they can start at a younger age, but the U.S. soldiers might give them a run for their money. Around 40% oh. of U.S. soldiers indulge in binge drinking. I know what you're thinking. I didn't expect that. What does this have to do with the power of their militaries? Although drinking is a skill that might be impressive on a wild night out on the town, it's not a positive thing during combat. It's important for soldiers to keep their mental health stable over extended periods of combat. The soldiers might use alcohol as a way of coping with the difficult- Oh boy. Oh, I'm not gonna point it out, but y'all see the issue here. Y'all see it. Stable over extended periods of combat. The soldiers might use alcohol as a way of coping with the difficult experiences they encounter during the military instead of talking about them. Over hmm. half of British servicemen and women drank at a level that could harm their health in 2018 most likely to self-medicate from mental health conditions such as PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Similarly, It's really sad too. And I can't speak again about British because I'm not from there, but the way we treat our veterans whenever they come back, it's like we don't regard for the fact that they could potentially have problems or underlying issues that will not allow them to reassimilate into society. So again, they have to self-medicate, whether that be fornication, drinking, drugs, self-harm you know whatever if if counseling and therapy and rehabilitation things were made so were made available to vets it would help them a lot and considering these are the people who potentially would have gave give their li given their lives for our country i think we deserve or they deserve so much more from us oh it's a huge problem among veterans wow things just got dark Back to a more lighthearted topic. You can't mention the drinking preferences of the British without mentioning their ultimate beverage of choice, tea. In tea. contrast, the U.S. prefers coffee. Does this still can't make a proper cup of tea? The combat performance of either side. Time to find out. Many British tanks and armored vehicles are fitted with water boiling devices. Cube shaped kettles enable the troops to boil water inside the protection of a tank huh? and drink tea to their heart's content. Maybe. <laughs> So why y'all are clunking along through the desert, potentially getting blown up it by mines? You're boiling some tea. Very British. Why the British were willing to sacrifice the sturdiness of their vehicles in Afghanistan? <laughs> this might seem a bit eccentric, not to mention pointless, but hear us out. During World War II, a large Should number of calming. fatalities were caused by crew members having to leave the safety of their tanks when they needed a break. There was only one reasonable solution: let them make a brew inside the tank. That way, the troops were less of a target for enemy fire. 10 out of 10 for ingenuity. Who knows, mm. maybe this could be their secret weapon in a future war. There's nothing like Tea a fresh brew to keep an army going. 
But don't discount oh the Americans my God. because they also seem to recognize the importance of a lovely warm beverage. The U.S. Army aims to ensure coffee is always available to its soldiers, whether in ration packs or at garrisons. Sometimes hmm. there are shortages, so improvisation comes into play to give the soldiers their daily fix. Okay, so y'all take tea, we take coffee. I don't know, it's so dark. The Korean Both are caffeinated drinks, so... Or some soldiers indulged in sock coffee. Coffee filtered using a sock. Or Ew. if the worst comes to worst, they just mix instant coffee granules with cold water and down it like a shot of vodka. Lovely. Ugh. It's worth it to have that caffeine coursing through your veins ready for battle. Clearly, mm. both sides have their vices, but we'll have to give the Brits the edge on this one, based purely on the fact that they're less likely to drop dead from swallowing some questionable feet fungi. In this capitalist yeah. world, soldiers aren't just fighting for their national pride or a noble cause. They also want to receive their paycheck at the end of it all. The sure. draft ended in 1973 after the Vietnam War in the USA, making the Army a professional, career-oriented force. In the British Army, the national... But let's not... It's the way he's putting it, it sounds like you're only joining the military to go to war. There are so many different other positions within the military. Again, you could be a nurse, you could be a healthcare worker, you could be a psych person, you could, I don't know, just be there for entertainment, you could be there to build things, engineering. It's not all everybody joins the military because they have a death wish. Like, you can join the military with previous education or because you want to take that route to get to a different career. Like I could, I'm working on nursing right now, I'm, but instead of going to the military, I'm going to nursing school. But if I wanted to go the military route, they would fund my entire education and I would be in the military. Service officially ended in 19... I just don't want any involvement with the military, so I'm not doing that. And it transformed into a professional army in 1963. So who gets the fattest check? New recruits in the British so Army start with a salary of £15,985 a year in training, soon going up to 20400 when... A sergeant is only making $29,000 a year. You guys are not... That shows me you're not doing it for the money. Wait. So a sar... Oh! No, a sergeant in the UK makes £35,000. A sergeant in the U.S. makes twenty-nine thousand pounds on both sides. You don't go into the military clearly for the money. I'm a private. After a few years, if they can reach the rank of sergeant, the salary will go up to thirty-five thousand eight hundred fifty-three pounds a year. That's around forty-six thousand bucks. In the U.S. Army, new recruits can expect to earn twenty-four thousand five hundred twelve dollars a year as a private first class after initial training. A sergeant earns anything up to twenty-nine thousand six hundred ten dollars a year. So we have a clear winner here. But if you have a family, that is not enough to take care of. If you have like extrenu what's the word? Extrenuating circumstances. If you have to take care of a family member, you know, whatever, that's not enough. Let's hope the Americans don't find out or they could end up switching sides. Yeah. Now that forty thousand dollars as a sergeant, that's a lot. Good for y'all. With so much money, you'd hope the British soldiers would go through a half-decent training program. Let's find out if that's the case. In the UK, most soldiers complete a 14-week common military syllabus, followed by specialist training for different trades and divisions. US soldiers train for slightly less time. They complete a 10-week basic combat training course, then complete more career-oriented training. Okay, so, we have an ad. Like the video if you haven't yet, and subscribe. Don't give me another one. Overall, okay. both countries offer a similar style of training based on fitness, discipline, and weaponry. It's hard to say that one country is definitively Ugh. superior here, but there is one key difference. I really hate guns. The age of the recruits. A U.S. soldier must be 17 to join the forces with parental consent, or 18 without the consent. Meanwhile, Brits can join at the age of 16 if they have parental consent, making... Y'all can also freaking drink early, smoke early, have sex early, all that stuff. Who would have thought America would be more conservative than British people? When it comes to our laws, anyway. 17, 18, or 16. Can you imagine being 16 in the military? Okay, the only NATO country to recruit young people into That's its military lot. at age 16. It's a controversial policy, <laughs> considering these recruits must remain in the army until they're 22, and mm. they can't even vote or drink alcohol until they turn 18. With literal boys mm -hmm. among them who might have joined the forces as a rash decision, 
Could British soldiers be flakier and less mature than their US counterparts? No, I think we're in the same boat as each other. Like the guy just said, you know, you can join the military but can't do all these other things. In America, you can join the military but can't even legally buy a drink until you're 21. You're willing to give your life in a foreign country, but you can't even have a drink at, in your home country. Like, that's obtuse to me. Is their youth just a testament to how tough they are? But this is just the beginning. Average soldiers might make up the bulk of the army, but what about the guys that are really, really well trained? We're talking about elite special forces. The British Army has the famous SAS, or Special Air Service. Founded during World War II, it's one of the oldest special forces and has the highest entry requirement of all British forces, with the motto, Who Dares Wins. The SAS is respected and feared across the globe in equal measure. Who Dares Wins? What is y'all on this sheet? It sounds very like whenever you join a fraternity and you have to go through all these like crazy things just to join, Who Dares Wins? Y'all be torturing people. Heavily involved in reconnaissance and counterterrorism, meaning most of their work is below the radar and people like us can't get too nosy about it. Like killing Eve, MI6, or whatever. With Carolyn? If you know, you know. However, they do plenty of cool and hardcore stuff, like rescuing hostages. Not to be outdone, the U.S. Army has the highly respected and admired Delta Force, also mm -hmm. known as the 1st Special Forces Operation Detachment. Formed in 1977, it's known as one of the most secretive U.S. forces and specializes in counterterrorism and hostage rescue. Mm -hmm. Sounding familiar yet? Yeah. Allegedly, the Delta Force was modeled on the British SAS. We want to give the Brits the point here for sheer originality, yeah. but it's not exactly good news for them if the Americans know the training secrets and operations of their elite forces. That's a rookie error if there ever was one. How do we get Especially the info? Especially when there are way more U.S. soldiers and they have better equipment. What about the heads of the armies? The U.S. Army serves the government of the USA, making the president... <laughs> Look at him. He even did a little bobblehead of Trump. I'm dead. U.S. <sighs> Commander-in-Chief. And Meanwhile, the Queen. the British Army serves Her Majesty the Queen as head of the armed forces, who is also their Commander-in-Chief. Her Majesty the Queen... El Queen Elizabeth II is in charge of the army? I thought y'all said she was just a tourist attraction. Oh, no. We had this discussion, I think it was two day, the video I posted two days ago, on how democracy versus a monarchy, there are key differences. Ugh. Yeah, no. You can't choose who your king or your queen is. It's all uh, based on the family. So, oh no. I'm going to keep my opinion to myself on this one. Elizabeth is closely tied to the British military, having been a wife, mother, and even grandmother of individuals serving in the armed forces. During World War II, the Queen, who was then Princess Elizabeth, joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service herself and learned to maintain and drive military vehicles and ambulances. She even That's achieved good. the rank of Honorary Junior Commander while doing her part for the war effort. By comparison, the current U.S. President, as of this script's writing, claimed to suffer bone spurs when it was his time to serve his country. Ah! Bones here for the badass monarch up to her elbow in Greece, fixing combat vehicles and serving her country. Overall... So, the conversation about honor and respect of our military men, even our government leaders, there's no question, y'all are better at that. British and American armies are matched fairly evenly in terms of their training and structure. It doesn't exactly come as a surprise, considering their histories are so closely linked. Realistically, yeah. the Americans would likely have the upper hand in any war against the Brits due to sheer manpower and weaponry. But let's hope the two sides can settle their differences over a cup of tea. Or coffee. Now check out our <laughs> India and China. Man. Yeah, so as expected in the beginning, America did win. But I don't think it was because of the reasons that we all thought. Yeah, we have so many man, we have so much manpower and uh, utilities, but that's not all it takes to win a war. Hmm. Again, though, it's still baffling that your queen controls your military. A lot I still gotta learn. Subscribe if you're here, like the video. Bye.